Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the decline lines in the Ponziani Counter Gambit, which is my favorite way to attack the Ponziani opening. If you're not familiar with Ponziani, it starts out with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then c3, preparing for the push on d4 to control the center of the board. Black counterattacks this with the Ponziani Counter Gambit, and that is with Pawn 2 F5. Now, I did another video on the accepted lines, and that is if the Pawn takes here on F4. If you haven't watched that video, I will have a link in the description below, so definitely recommend checking that video out. But in today's video, we're going to be going over what happens if they decline. So they don't take here. They have a few other options. We're going to be looking at if they come here to d4, if they play bishop to b5, and then lastly, if they play d3. So let's go ahead and dig into those variations. The most common of these variations for white is to continue with d4, and this is what they're setting up from the beginning with the c3s to push forward here on d4, control the center of the board. Black has a couple options. I think the easiest way is just to continue taking here on e4, and then after they play knight takes on e5 because there's no other real good options if they... You know, we're to try something like bishop to g5, uh, attacking the queen. Well, we just play bishop to e7. Uh, after the exchange here, then they can't just take with their knight here on e5 because they're going to go down material. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. They're probably just going to take with their knight here on e5. And then we can play queen to f6. If you've watched the initial video on the Ponziani counter gamut, you see that queen to f6 is a pretty common move for black. And I think this is an easier setup, and we'll look at this position here in a minute, than playing uh, something tricky like d6. Because white has some really good options. One, they could just push forward with d5. And once you have played this move d6... Now, all of a sudden, you can bring your bishop to b5 for white, pinning down the knight to the king. Uh, yes, the bishop here on c8 is now attacking this f5 square, uh, but I feel like black can get into some pretty tricky situations. Even if white takes here on f5, maybe black recaptures here, but then bishop to b5, pinning down the knights. Maybe play a6 to attack it, but then after the exchange right here, the pawn structure is all beat up. Pawn takes here on e5, black recaptures. You can see the queens come off the board. You can see double pawns here on the c file for black. So definitely not exactly the position I would like. Uh, and so for that reason, uh, I do think it's easier just to go ahead and take, instead of playing d6, go ahead and take with your pawn here on e4. They're probably going to take with their knight. Don't see another option that they really have. And then to play queen to f6. White has a few options from here. Probably the best move, just go ahead and take the knight here on c6. Black can take with their pawn. This opens up for the dark square bishop. It also allows black to play a d5 and have a pretty good pawn structure in the center. So that's why you'd be taking with your b pawn here to c6. And then, you know, if they ever tried something, queen to h5 check, uh, can't really do too much without the knight supporting that because you could just play g6 and that's going to stop the attack. Now, if they decide... Okay, they don't want to take with their knight here on uh, c6. Maybe they play queen to c2, uh, attacking the pawn right here. We can just go ahead and play uh, d5 up, protecting this. We have two central pawns. Uh, they don't, so we're in a pretty good position right here. The other option might be bishop to b5. But this is going to be a mistake because if our pawn is here on d7... Then bringing the bishop out, and you're not really pinning down the knight to anything, we can just go ahead and take with our knight here on e5. After they take with our pawn, we can take with our queen, and they're going to be down in material. So that's what's going to happen uh, if they play the most natural move of just taking here knight to e5. We're just going to bring our queen here to f6. Now that was if they play d4 against the counter gambit, but they could play something else, you know, bishop to uh, b5, maybe they could try, but just as we looked at in the previous example, if they bring their bishop out and it's not pinning down the knight, well, this isn't going to do too much for them. We could take with our pawn right here. Uh, let's say they take with their bishop here. Well, we could just take their bishop, 
Uh, they could play knight to e5. We could play queen to g5. This is attacking both the knight and this pawn here on g2. Uh, there's no way for them to really defend this. And this pawn here on e4 is also a nuisance. Then we can play knight to f6 at some point. Uh, we can eventually get our light square bishop involved into the game, castle on the queen side. So uh, just know they don't have a lot of good options. Bringing the bishop out here is not going to do uh, anything. So what other options do they have? In their other video, we've already looked at if they take here. We've already looked at if they play pawn to d4. Then they could play somewhat defensive. Uh, they may have come out the gates thinking that they're going to push forward. And then when we attack the pawn here on e4, uh, they get a little timid and play d3, supporting this pawn on e4 because they really don't want you to take and attack the knight here on f3. So that is absolutely an option. Uh, from here, because they're playing timid, I like to be extremely aggressive. So I'm gonna be looking to push here on d5, really looking to control the center of the board. So let's look at all the options that they may have from here. They could take our f pawn. Uh, from here, we're just going to take back with our bishop right here. Uh, and we have lots of different options depending on where they go. We could play knight to f6. We could get our dark square bishop involved into the game, get our queen involved into the game to a lot of different squares, castle on the queen side. But you can see here, we have our two central pawns. They have one central pawn. We're not down a pawn. Usually when you play a gambit, you're down in material here. Your knight on c6 is protecting your e5 pawn, which is being attacked right now. So you have a very strong setup and you are controlling the center of the board. Definitely a position I like for black. They could also take our other pawn. Uh, so taking right here and attacking the knight here on c6. So we're gonna have to be doing something, but we could just take it with our queen, that's fine. And if they push forward, because how do they really attack right here? Black is controlling the center of the board. If they play c4, then I like just bringing the queen back here to f7. You have different options. You could play queen to d6. The main reason that I like queen to f7 is because this allows me to get my light square bishop involved into the game, castle on the queen side, and it frees up this semi-open d file so that eventually when your rook comes here to d8, uh, it can attack this entire file right here. You can see this pawn is going to be under attack for black for a while here. Uh, so it just gives you a lot of attacking lines. Uh, and so that's why queen to f7. Uh, while it may look like a weird square that you don't bring your queen to that often, uh, in this opening it does do extremely well. If they don't take one of your pawns, uh, tough to find another move that I, I think they would play, but maybe queen to a4. Uh, once you play that d pawn, as we said, that's going to allow them to pin down your knight. They can't bring their light square bishop because they are blocking it by d3. So d3, definitely not the best move for them. But queen to a4, uh, this is threatening knight taking here on e5. Uh, so that does... Uh, Definitely pose a threat we have to deal with, but then just queen to d7 really takes everything out of their attack. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this video on the decline lines. Just don't see too many options. These are the, the ones I think you may see the most here, but definitely wanted to make this video as I did get request on the last video. Always look at the comments to see what types of videos you wanna see. Uh, and there was definitely a lot of people saying, hey, love the counter gambit, but do wanna see the decline line. So thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel, and I will see you in the next video.